So the last presentation today, just before we pitches, uh, will be by Thomas Mortnos from AppCamp. Who here has been to AppCamp event? Raise of hands. Few people. Okay, so AppCamp is basically, uh, it's the biggest hackathon in the region. A hackathon is where people, coders or business developers and designers and other people gather over a weekend and then try to create some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of product. For AppCamp, it's, it's an app. And I think uh, last year it was about 500 attendees and about 60 teams with 60 apps developed. So it's, these are amazing numbers and people, when you talk to people in London, they're like amazed. How can you gather so many people for one weekend? Uh, and now AppCamp uh, switched to sort of does other things as well and they develop apps and now AppCamp is the leading app developer in Lithuania and Thomas will share the experience of AppCamp with us. Hi everyone. First of all, it's probably a little bit hard for me to talk after, I would say, the best known man in the world from Lithuania. Yesterday we met a guy from TechCrunch, uh, Butcher, the editor, the editor of the uh, of Europe and we asked one simple question which Lithuanian company you know and the only name he had in his mind was a Gedjar so I think that we need to be proud of Ilya and uh, I believe you got a lot of good messages from the world uh, we still did a lot of homework the good homework uh, in uh, Lithuania and I'll try to share because the login uh, uh, slogan was the game changers so uh, I believe we as an app camp, we created quite many apps which are industry or business changers. And I'll try to share our experience that after the Ilya presentation, you all know that the, there is a lot of money in games. But I want to show that the apps, it's not only games. And if you look it wisely, you can find the money also in other places. Yeah, so we start fr from there that first is we want to become uh, a part of everyone's life. This is what AppCamp is standing for. And there is a few things which are very important for us is uh, quality. Proactively, we approach those industries, we approach clients, and uh, mutual benefits. So everything we create, we want that both sides win. If it's not, then we're not in that deal. And hopefully we'll become, after Gajar, another rising star of Lithuania that in a couple years, then we'll ask uh, Mike, another name, the app camp will be mentioned. Good, and the app camp in short, uh, the event, it's already was mentioned by Vitas, another thing which we did, uh, I don't know, how many students are here? Could you raise your hands? Okay, quite many. How many developers? Okay. How many marketing people? Wow, not, not enough. And what are the rest are doing? <laughs> business. So business is about sales and marketing. Good. But uh, so it's quite a lot of students. So AppCamp Labs was created for that purpose that students, then you are drinking beer, then you're having good time. From time to time going to exams and sometimes even to the lectures. Uh, that you could sit in the lab and during those four or six years you could create something tangible. So startups which can default and you will be having a lot of lessons learned after it. And the, of course the one who holds and pays the salary for the 30 people who are working in AppCamp is of course our business to business solution. Um, why we still decided that we need to do a good homework in Lithuania? In Lithuania at the end of the year will be a lot of smart phone devices. And I'll go maybe more to details. So from 700 phones right now, in Lithuania at the end of the year, it's gonna be 1.3 million phones. So it means that everyone who can afford will already gonna be having it. Believe me, there are not many apps, local language, which adds value for different segments. And there is a lot of things which might be done good, even in Lithuania. Another one, uh, as Ilya also mentioned, is tablets. Tablets is growing fast and a lot of households which could not afford uh, because of the dropping prices now can. And at the end of the year, it's gonna be 300,000. So it's also a significant number 
which you can think about and think about what can, what can you create. And of course, Lithani is maybe not the best language, but in some cases, to try and to start, Lithani is also a good place. Do not forget that in the architecture point of view, while constructing any app, do it multi-language so you can do it fast and replicate to any market. So this is about numbers. I think Ilya told a lot. I will not concentrate on them, and I'll try to concentrate on some industries. So where? First of all, we took the challenge for one of, uh, I would say, good TV show, Tuxten Mechewike. How many of you know that show and maybe even used an app? Could you raise your hand? Oh, OK, good, thank you. Quite many. The main goal for us was how to ensure that the TV audience comes back. So it does not miss each show. So this is first. And we ensured it, that it happens. Another target for us was what can we do in app between the show? And this is where we created the training packages. And this game starts to be flying and from the audience, which used to be 100,000, 70,000 apps were downloaded. So I think it's a huge amount if to compare where it increased the TV audience amount and the loyalty as well. So this is something what you can do, it's television. Of course, TVs are very afraid of N apps and in general for the second screen and the third because of cannibalization. A lot of print media moving to the, to the internet already find out themselves that their revenues dropped three times or two times. And TV is afraid that it might happen with them as well, moving to the digital. But they understand that it's going to happen. It's just the matter how to make this cannibalization and transformation smooth without dropping the revenues. Then Eurovision Vote. It was one of the apps where during Donatas Montvilla song it was 1.5 million clicks during three minute time. So it was 10,000 clicks per second. So if thinking about what our engineers, backend engineers had to do to ensure that this is managed, I think it was quite challenging for them. I'm very proud for my team. Then retail, think about how many plastic cards are on the market. And the OmniD was one of the first which moved together, we with Omnital moved that card to the digital, to the, to the apps. No, everyone knows that it's like 2,000 places where you can get a discount with the OmniD, but no one knows where are those places. And with that, you were able to do it. If you would think widely, what can you do with loyalty and with plastic cards in Lithuania, not only, it's a lot. Also, could you start doing M-commerce? I believe, yes, you can. And this is another thing what needs to be considered. And uh, it's a lot of opportunities trying. So the retail is another sector where you can do something. Insurance. Today, I think in the Android market, it was launched, Drodima Salta. It's uh, the biggest Lithuanian broker uh, where you can get from a lot of insurance companies the best insurance offer and you will be able to to pay i mean it's a pure m commerce solution with all your policies in your pocket everything in one place if an accident happens it's going to be a manual what to do if your insurance is finished you by few clicks you can insure your car this convenience it's also transforms the insurance market as it own it will be, then the papers will be gone. And this app will be widely used. Then productivity, what we did. There is a lot of mobile engineers which are going all around. And there is, a, from management perspective, there is a wish to control them somehow, to control those people, to understand what they do, to measure how su some tasks are taking, how much time, to understand the places for inefficiency. And what we do, we provided that control and we eliminated the papers which those people were starting their work getting like few pages of paper and understanding what they need to do. 
then they come back, then the secretary puts it in the system, and there is a lot of places for an error. And in here, you, we, you can do some controls where it eliminates an error inside an application, and it also there is no need for administration additional work, which is overhead. So this company saved quite a lot by doing it, and now we see a huge growing demand from a lot of companies who see the value in such application, which we did. AG, self-service. Uh, all know the prepaid card. A lot of self-services self will understand that it's sending email and we keep ign ignoring it. But for a lot of companies, moving it to mobile, maybe you'll find time to read, to reply, to review the invoice and to say, yes, I want to pay it. And this is something where the mobile could give you an opportunity to do. And I think the AGIS will show a lot of growth that the top-up of this prepaid card will be doing through this app. Because you check the balance, it's gone, you just few clicks and it's up. And this is very important. And it's not only for that. There are a lot of industries who have a lot, a big amounts of clients and self-service for them, it's really matter. And if you're the, the clients are yours, so believe me, the self-service in an app might be the good way moving forward. Then Teleclinica, medicine. <clears throat> a lot of yours are sitting. And I know that there is a lot of uh, not nice things on your, on your skin happens when you are growing up, like in the age of 13, 15, and you stand in the mirror, and actually you, you are a little bit ashamed to go uh, to the doctor. You are a little bit ashamed to ask parents what I should do. So the service which will be here, you can take a photo, and you'll send it to your doctor for 10 liters, and you'll get the reply what you need to do. And this is very important that it actually, if you want to be anonymous, you don't need to disclose who you are. But you'll get an answer without the physical coming. And this is where the medicine is also moving forward. I know that researches are done in UK that a lot of people still prefer the physical contact. And of course, because a lot of people are still an older generation, because we used to communicate physically by meeting people, by seeing you, who, who you're growing, most of your things, and who listened to Fontana's Denise uh, uh, yesterday's presentation about coming in the bank, you want everything to do online. And these things also you will be willing to do in the future online because you don't know why I need to go to the doctor if I can do it remotely to, sit, to stand in the row for an hour and to get the same answer, which he just sees at you and he says you the, the recipe he gives you. You can do it through your phone with the help of the camera. Then Durskininga, the smart city. This is the first city which in a couple of months we will launch an app, which will mix the city guide together with the loyalty program. Because we all know the different city cards, where you can go, for example, in Luxembourg, and you can buy for 25 euro the family package for three days. And it's like, I need to understand why I need, why I need to find that card and buy. And then I need to understand in the piece of paper the discounts, why, where I can get it. And in general, you can get everything in one package, in an app. I can see the places, I can see what's happening in the town, and if I want to use the discounts, I just click with the in-app purchase, and I get the package for three days, for seven days, for family or for myself. And it gives a big opportunity for all the parties, meaning for the city who will be the first and it's instead of a lot of brochures, you just advertise one app. You give a lot of opportunity for the businesses who are actually can get the value out of it because they can promote themselves to the very target segment. Then you are in Durskininke. And it also gives something good for the customers because they just love to have in one place a good offers, places around them, and What's going on? What I can do in that town? So to summarize, a few things, what apps are doing in terms of a little bit of marketing as well. First, for the marketing people, the apps is actually driving you to start thinking about personalized marketing. We all understand that this is the way moving forward. But it's so hard that there is a system 
of the agencies, big TV channels, and it's not going away fast, but it's coming. And for some innovative companies and marketing people, it's about that. It's an opportunity with an app, start considering personalization and understanding your customer better and better. It's a new cheap communication channel. For email, you pay for mass email campaigns. For SMS, you pay. Think about push notifications cost nothing now. If you will utilize that, exchange your emails for which you pay or SMS for which you pay to the app with the push notifications, you can do quite significant changes. So think about it, it's a cheap channel. The third, I would say the mobile first, what does it give? It gives you the opportunity to review your processes. Because right now, a lot of companies, if you look at the website, it's a mix of what company management want, what for the customers offer it, and a lot of other things. And mobile app uh, force you to start thinking what really is the value added for your customer. And this is very important. And of course, as I said, that it's a brand awareness tool because you start, if you do a good advertising, you will be always seen in the tops of the app stores, which adds you additional brand awareness. Why not, not to utilize it? And the last, of course, it's at the end, the business is about generating more revenues. So it's about sales and loyalty. And if you heard the, the Ilya correctly, the web browsing and the mobile apps are quite differently used in terms of, uh, how to say, repeated opening. So it means that apps are used more often. And this is the thing, more often means loyalty. And it is very important to understand that it's not that it's either web or mobile. I would say probably you need to put in the middle N, and this is going to be the right answer. And very short, this is a project what we do commercially. And there, there is a lot of good things which are cooking in those labs already, which we all started together with Omnitel and a lot of phone manufacturers. And right now it's 84 workplaces established in universities and it is huge potential and this is something what we did in Lithuania all together very unique even in the worldwide. In Vilnius University one of the student who used to participate in app camp and afterwards he decided in the in the lab to continue we got a very good app Mopkinas who is about the movies repertoire simple as that and now this guy is working in AppCamp. So he got a working place, he got a good product and money for it, everyone is happy. Then in Gediminas Technical University, a guy uh, showed his possibility with Kinect. And we decided that yes, this is something in that. And from Monday he was working in AppCamp as well. And the Kinect technology I think is a lot of good opportunities because now the, with Kinect you can any surface you can convert to the display with the help of Kinect. And then you think about it, it's a lot of the ways to differentiate even in the conferences with the help of Kinect. Look, where is the Kinect? There is a lot of always people standing around. So it tags your attention and it gives you possibility to differentiate. And there are a lot of other places as a smart displays and a lot of things where Kinect technology can be used. So I believe it's gonna be even more very interesting things coming from the, this technology. Then Kaunas University augmented reali uh, reality and robotics. I think the Kaunas has a huge potential. And this is what we saw and the people are creating robots and I'm very pr proud. In this university, to be honest, and in others, another around 20 ideas is already cooking. And it's only fifth month then this laboratory has just started. So I'm very proud about everyone, the students, and the ones who are from those universities, please come and visit and start something doing in it. And with Practica Capital, we agreed that for the ones who will comply uh, the principles which we agreed with them, they're gonna get their 100,000 investment. So think about it. It's something, if it's not gonna work you okay, you're still okay to fail. And there is no cost. So learn 
to fail when you're a student. And it's okay. If you're gonna have a good idea, I believe that Practica and other investors will give you money for that. So just do it, come, and everything will be fine. And I think it's quite in time and finished. So thank you, and I'm ready for your questions. Any questions from audience? Do you have any questions here? Time is pressing us hardly, so we have time for one question. Okay, no questions? So maybe I'll, add, I'll just ask a question, Thomas. So what could be you know, the top tip for people who, are, you know, who would like to develop apps, but we're still sort of a bit concerned? Uh, where, can we, where can they find you know, our team members? Maybe think maybe, I think there's a lot of sort of people who could be business developers in the crowd. Where could they find you know, programmers? So of course, the simple answer, then it's gonna be App Camp, come to it. This is simple as that. And I want to drop a call for myself. Here is the contacts. So please call. We'll try to connect you somehow. And if everyone probably was uh, uh, to the Mr. Wozniak presentation, so it's just work, 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 and be in team. And just find the team. Don't be alone. So this is uh, probably the answers. Any questions maybe in the audience? After this, one question here. Course. If not, so then thank you once Thomas, again. Yeah. There's one question there. Hi. Uh, one more question. Could you please uh, tell what's the advantages and disadvantages of applications for business versus HTML5 in mobile area? Okay. Uh, first of the thing probably is performance. So you need to understand the requirements from the client, and sometimes HTML5 is maybe even better than the native apps. The second thing which is important is for you to understand the functions which are used. And for some functions, it's better to do it native. And of course, it's another thing what are requirements from the client and the budget as well. You know, sometimes you need to sacrifice some of the requirements and maybe some dreams if the budget is small but client still wants to be cross-platform. So then the HTML5 is the best solution. So it, you need to look case by case. There is no single answer. What is better? It's on each of the target of the client. You need to analyze requirements and then to say what would be better for this particular purpose and app. Okay. Thank you, Thomas, very much. Thank you. <laughs>